Mojang has released 1.20, aka the Trails and Tales update, which means it's that time again to showcase a list of vanilla-friendly mods. With over 20 mods and a few honorable mentions, I'm positive you'll include one or more of these mods in your next playthrough. To kick off the list, we have a mod called Creeper Overhaul, which simply adds 15 biome-specific creeper variants. Some are simply reskinned, while others possess attributes. To give you an idea of what that entails, ocean creepers are mutated pufferfish, Bamboo creepers don't explode, and they are deathly scared of pandas. And snowy creepers are neutral, they attack strays. Creeper Overhaul is the perfect mod to spice up creeper encounters while keeping it vanilla. Do you want copper to be a more versatile material? Everything is copper mod makes copper the new iron. Make tools, armor, golems, and a multitude of blocks out of that ductile metal. Not only that, everything in this mod comes in the four copper variants, and you can control the variant of each item with the help of a weathering station. No longer will you store stacks of copper blocks to collect dust. Instead, erect an army of copper golems or make a minecart highway. Our next mod, Geode Plus, implements nine new geode formations. While traversing all three dimensions, you have the chance to stumble upon a bonus cache of a specific mineral. Come across new minerals like Pink Topaz, Celestite Shards, and Rapis Shards. This mod includes a pedestal, new recipes for gunpowder and health potions, and new armor trims. Geode Plus is a great addition to a world, especially if you're a mining fanatic like myself. Fire Arrows Ignite Fire. This is a very self-explanatory and straightforward mod. Flame Arrows will now ignite blocks just like how flint and steel would. At first glance, this mod seems too niche and subtle to impact gameplay much. But imagine missing a fire arrow in a forest in or nearby your wooden house. The repercussions would be detrimental. This mod is definitely more of a liability than an asset, but hey, at least you can now light your campfire and nether portal with a flame bow. Skulk can be turned into a parasite-like entity with a Skulk Horde mod. Skulk threatens all life. If left unchecked, it will infect everything. As the horde progresses, it will evolve. Stronger and more challenging abominations will surface. Spore spewers located in skull tombs will be your main target, since these creatures spread the infestation. Even though it sounds hopeless, fear not. You can resist this enemy by using certain items. With enough time and perseverance, you can overcome this calamity, for a little while at least. As most of you know, update 1.20 revolves around archaeology, which is the mainstay of our next mod, Better Archaeology. Get your hands and brush dirty in 22 new structures. These points of interest range from tiny docile camps to dungeons housing traps and loot, and of course collectible fossils and artifacts. The fossil parts you uncover can be fully built into placeable blocks. These same blocks grant small benefits. For example, the ocelot fossil scares creepers away, and the sheep fossil is mayonnaise, or for you uncultured people, an instrument. Better archaeology also offers new blocks, improved brushes, and totems to utilize. If you felt the archaeology aspect of the 1.20 update was lackluster, this mod will surely fix that problem for you. Our next mod, Flutter, will resonate with a few of you, considering the state your bedroom is in. <laughs> Sorry. Clutter boasts a dizzying amount of blocks and block variants. Here's a list of the ones I like. Bunk beds, bookshelves, usable benches, plushies, trellis, curtains, chimneys, food blocks, elytras, yep, elytras, and my god, much, much more. Use JI to help you with the recipes. Oh, and for you fabric users, Clutter has a lot of things everything as copper has, which is nice since the mod is only for Forge. So what are you waiting for? Turn your house from an empty shell into a lively, cozy home brimming with personality using Clutter's massive selection of decorations. Unsheath your sword because better combat is making an appearance. On the surface, this mod overhauls how players swing weapons, but it's more in-depth than you think. Attack animations, proper weapon collision, weapon combos, and dual wielding capabilities are packaged into better combat. Playing in third person is a breeze. Each type of weapon has its own animation, and for the cherry on top, you can now swing through grass. How cool is that? Better combat does a fantastic job removing the one-dimensional structure and repetitiveness vanilla combat possesses. Move aside, it's time for additional lanterns to shine. Pick from an assortment of 16 colors and 20 material types. 19 chain variants are also available, resulting in nearly an endless combination of craftable chains and lanterns. I personally like the dark prismary chain with the cyan quartz lantern. This is yet another subtle and situational mod, but by golly it's wonderful to have more than two lanterns to choose from. Does your world feel vacant, perhaps even monotonous? If so, repurposed structures is here to save the day. 
Basically, this mod creates variants and modified versions of vanilla structures scattering them across the three dimensions. I bestow upon you a brief list of structures from each dimension. The overworld has things like wooden end cities inhabited by villagers, and ocean-themed ancient cities guarded by the drown, ocean monuments home to wither skeletons, and warped villages run by piglins can be discovered in the nether. The end houses outposts swarming with phantoms, and strongholds brimming with crying obsidian and amethyst, along with enermites and shulkers. And that's only the tip of the iceberg. Repurposed Structures offers a plethora of vanilla-friendly structures to give you a reason to go adventuring again. Minecraft is made of blocks, so let's add more to it. The Blockus mod arms players with completely new block types, new existing block types, and even legacy blocks from the old alphas. Some blocks generate naturally, while others require a stone cutter to be obtained. Most of the blocks from Blockus consists of full blocks, stair slabs, and walls, but also has special stuff like food crates, gates, unique doors, and asphalt, which grants increased movement speed when traversed on. Overall, this is the ideal mod if you're looking for something that has exclusively blocks. No furniture or decorations to be found here. Villagers are an essential asset to players. Villagers Plus capitalizes on this and adds four new occupations. Get in touch with nature through the help of a horticulturist villager. Buy an assortment of goodies from an occultist. Get access to all things oceanic through an oceanographer. And visit an alchemist. They have something special brewing for you. Just like vanilla, these modded occupations are governed by workstation blocks. These workstations have a specific use to the player. For example, the occultist's enchanted basin stores experience. Villagers Plus can come in clutch by aiding you in specific areas of the game. Armor is a vital component to survival. The Plenty of Armors mod understands this and equips players with 32 new armor sets. This armor can be found in vanilla loot chests or crafted with specific recipes. Some armor sets can only be attained later in the game, and some armor sets have full set bonuses. Early game armor includes wood and brick. Brick has quite a few armor bars at the cost of movement speed. Mid game armor would include redstone and phantom. Phantom gives permanent night vision. Late game armor would include amethyst and star to sight. Amethyst grants infinite luck too, while Star to Sight gives fire resistance and the ability to walk on lava. So to wrap it up, instead of limiting yourself to 6 armor sets, give yourself more variety in rewarding full set perks with plenty of armors mod. Shulker boxes are the unrivaled mobile storage option. The easy shulker boxes mod makes them even better. This mod applies the vanilla bundles inventory system to shulker boxes. A tooltip will appear when hovering over them, and using the mouse wheel scrolls through the inventory. Right click to remove the selected stack, or control right click to only take one item. The colored plus signs give hints to what's currently inside. Right click dragging the box will empty its items. This works backwards as well. Ender chests have these mechanics too. If you want to make handling shulker boxes in their items way easier, make sure to install easy shulker boxes. Every playthrough has the same story. You eventually obtain fully enchanted netherite, which enables you to walk over most hostile mobs. The improved mobs mod introduces a difficulty system to stop this from happening. As days go by, the difficulty bar value will increase. This value affects hostile mobs based stats, equipment, and pathfinding. Eventually, mobs will break blocks and climb ladders to reach the player. They will ride guardians in water and use player items like ender pearls and TNT. Improved mobs also makes it so you can't hit your pet and armor can be equipped on them, which is a nice bonus since wolves are a liability in battle, but now they're almost a necessity. The Beautify mod tunnel visions on providing players with a small selection of decor blocks. Lattice, blinds, picture frames, light bulbs, lamps, and other household objects reside within this mod. Beautify also adds a new Botanist villager in their house. This villager offers items from the mod along with other natural blocks like moss and rooted dirt. If you have a friend or significant other that loves to decorate, make sure to let them know this mod exists. Not only survive, but thrive with Beautify. Sound physics remastered is to thank for all these wonderful noises. With this mod, mobs, water, and lava sounds create an insane immersive experience in caves. Fully capture the sheer vastness and emptiness of your surroundings. SPR works anywhere sound can bounce around. Oh, and blowing up TNT in the distance can sound really sick. It's crazy how dynamic sounds can add so much to the game.
Slap on some sunscreen for it's time to head into the nether. The nether's generation has an overworld vibe to it now. This is due to the Incendium mod. Eight biomes, nine structures, tweaked vanilla mobs, items, and advancements accompany this new terrain generation. One can wander this molten wasteland for hours and still be captured by its breathtaking views. To give a bit of insight into the structures, some of them are stupidly massive and the mobs inhabiting them are armed to the teeth. The structure generation isn't reliable and the vanilla items in these POIs have been tweaked slightly. Incendium might be a miss for some, but for those who want a completely fresh nether experience, this mod is definitely an option. Incendium has a cousin called Nullscape, which is made by the same developer. Nullscape overhauls the ends generation to, like before, be more like the overworld. The end feels chunkier. I mean, just look at the dragon's island. Now that's a maximum chunkage. This mod also includes three new biomes and two structures. The three biomes blend well with the end's aesthetics and atmosphere, but at the same time offer something different. The structures are a bit underwhelming, but hey, they still add content to the end, so I can't really complain. It's a similar story as Incendium. Nullscape is a great mod if you want a world generation overhaul with a few extra bonuses. We are returning to the Dragon's Island for this next mod. The final boss of Minecraft has been modified. Ender Trigon has given her three heads and a handful of modded abilities to use against the player. After strafing, she will choose a random attack to perform. Charge. Snatch. Crash. And Dive Bomb. Snatch and Crash are my favorite attacks, and Dive Bomb is pretty neat too. I love the baby dragons. A few other Ender Dragon mechanics have been tinkered with, which you can see for yourself on the mod's Curse Forge page. Ender Trigon remedies the Ender Dragon's dullness by arming the boss with a few more tools to make the game-winning fight tougher. Before we close out the video, there are a few honorable mentions that I'd love to quickly share with you. The first honorable mention is a list of mods containing the complete series of Young's Better Structures. Each mod overhauls a specific vanilla structure, and these mods go hard. The modded ocean monuments, nether fortresses, and desert temples are colossal compared to the vanilla counterparts. Young's bridges and extras take a different approach by implementing many types of decayed bridges and other things like ruins and pillars. Sadly, at the time of making this video, the mods are still 1.19.4, which is why they didn't make the main list. But fear not, they will update in no time. The other honorable mention is fresh animations. Most vanilla mobs have fluid and breathtaking animations, including both idle and action movements. With a keen eye, one can notice the many moving parts these mobs possess. Their whole bodies can sway, their eyes move, and the animations match the mob's design. Slimes are like jello, undead mobs are hunched over, gas tentacles move like wet noodles, and phantoms have a bat-like vibe to them. I hate to break this to you, but fresh animations is a resource pack, not a mod. Hopefully you can forgive me for putting a resource pack in a mod list, and I hope even more so that you'll use fresh animations for one of your playthroughs. Well, did you find one or two mods that caught your interest? If so, please do tell me in the comments below. As always, check the description for mod links. Thanks for watching, like the video, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future mod-related content. And as always, Krimlets, stay snazzy.